Hi, how you doing? It's me, your curse lad. So this morning, something bizarre happened. I finished setting up a beautiful world for today's preview, no joke, and then I updated to the preview. I waited for the update, I tapped the update, I installed the update, and then the whole Minecraft game uninstalled. So yeah. Anyways, you might have heard all about it. We've got big news, brand new features on the way, and even more. Give that like button a warm caress, and let's dive in. Our first stop of the day today has us over inside of the Badlands biome. I don't even need to spawn an egg. Naturally spawn right here. We've got an armadillo. We have great news. The armadillo, it most likely has a release date. And it's so soon. Our first gigantic takeaway from this brand new era of a Minecraft beta is that the armadillo has been de-experimentified. So that all means when creating a brand new world going forward now, the only experimental toggles we have again, at least when it comes to gameplay, is update 121 and build your trade stuff. Of course, we have all of that stuff too, but hey, we're not going to worry about it. With the news of Sweet Armor Diller being de-experimentified, that means this version of the armadillo that we're looking at right now or over on Minecraft Java is just about the final version. Then maybe they'll end up doing a little bit more bug fixing, but for our dear friend the armadillo, that's just about it. So now, let's talk proper dates. Tucked inside of the name and the numbers for today's beta is .80. So this preview is the very first preview from the upcoming 1.20.80 update. Last year, 1.19.80 released on April 26th. When it comes to this year's timeline, we're actually in a relatively similar place, and maybe even one week ahead. With the armadillo out of experimental, that means it will be implemented in the Minecraft 1.20.80 update, which seems like it'll release sometime in April this year. But if you know me, timelines are kind of like one of the big things that intrigues me. After Bedrock 1.19.80 came Bedrock 1.20. With the dawn of this big announcement filled armadillo we update cycle, it looks like Minecraft 1.21 could potentially be on the horizon. I realize it gets all a bit speculative here, but very likely that after this preview cycle, we enter official 1.21 snapshots and previews. Ayo, hey, oh, oh, and for those of you who checked out yesterday's Java snapshot, what about release dates of the armadillo, everything like that? Well, knowing a little bit about how they like to do things nowadays, the armadillo is probably going to release at about the same time on Minecraft to Java in Bedrock. That all means for Java gang, armadillo release date is probably about the middle of April as well. Now this hard, this uh, semi, I built a more beautiful one in a different world that I lost, the, the semi, the beautiful heart. <laughs> oh, veterans will know. Inside of a Minecraft world, over on Minecraft, the Bedrock, we're playing in Survival Minecraft, the heart looks full and solid, not quite a, a little bit weird, distorted looking like that one behind the bamboo. That heart is the Java Hardcore Heart. Take a seat, this is gigantic, because inside of the changelog coming soon, a hardcore mode. We're excited to say that we're working on hardcore mode for Bedrock and have been for a long time. It should be ready for testing sometime this spring. And then, confirmed by Corner Hard MC over on Twitter, Game Mode Spectator was one of the big steps that the devs needed to take to get hardcore mode on Bedrock. This is one of the big things we were speculating about for like, I feel like the entirety of last year, and yes, finally confirmed, Spectator. Spectator was a big piece of the puzzle for hardcore mode. Wait, hey, yo, oh, yo, bro, is that changing in front of me? <laughs> what the flip? I can't believe it. I genuinely cannot believe I'm living to see the day that hardcore Minecraft is making it to Bedrock Edition. And even better, hardcore Minecraft is making it to Bedrock in the combat update. I wonder what this means for the rest of the update. If they're going to put hardcore mode on Minecraft Bedrock finally, a huge parody thing and very combat related. Uh, please allow me to speculate a little bit here. Let me cook. Oh no, but you know what this makes me wonder about is, okay, we got hardcore mode on Bedrock and finally it's coming and what about combat? Because as it stands right now, I mean how it is because of the true nature of combat, it's very different experience on Minecraft to Java and Minecraft to Bedrock. And either way, back to the news, with such high stakes, we want to ensure we get hardcore mode right for releasing it to retail a version. So once it goes into preview, it'll be in testing probably for a hot minute, but it'll be in preview. As a Minecraft to Java main, this brings a small to tears to my eyes. I can't believe all of the love Bedrock is getting. I love to see it, but like a little jealous. We got this whole experimental camera stuff. That stuff is absolutely insane. There's editor mode, which isn't even inside of this thing. Then we have the whole render dragon thing, AKA shaders. And come on, man, <laughs> this is amazing. So though nothing has technically officially been confirmed quite yet, it looks like this next couple of months are going to be very, very interesting indeed. 
Next up, I mean, while we're here, let's take a look at this 1.21 feature, the Vault Block. The Vault Block has been updated in the snapshot. It's new. It's beautiful. That clean gray side texture. Oh, it's here as well. It's so nice looking. However, on the other hand, one thing that was not updated inside of this snapshot that is still a little bit beautiful looking, just maybe not as much beautiful. Up here, we got our dear friend, not so much friend, the Bogged Skeleton. And take a look at that model. It's real far away. So just squint your eyes, but I don't know how to get close. All right, fine. For science, I get close. The Bogged Skeleton with the mushroom on the top of its head, it's not here. That means you also cannot shear the Bogged like you can on Java in the new snapshot. The Bogged is just a... Uh, Annoying and terrible and uh, all-out nightmare, <laughs> and that's about it. Oh, and uh, other mobs just wanted to try out chambers on Bedrock too. I guess there's a long ways to go. Back over here at World Spawn, I've been doing a little bit of farming. This feature is a mind-blowing feature that I don't know if is a thing on Minecraft to Java, but if I harvest a sweet berry bush with a fortune tool, so I go ahead and harvest you. No, 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 I go ahead and harvest you, please work. No, 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 I go ahead and harvest you. All right, well. All right, well, if I harvest the sweet berry bush, whoa, with a fortune tool, there we go. We can get up to six sweet berries per harvest. This is actually insane. Now, unfortunately, it seems like you actually have to, like, completely decimate the bush for this to actually work, but that's crazy. Harvesting this thing with fortune three and getting all of those berries, now it's like... Why would you even bother to pick the bush like that? Additionally, our location is pretty much perfect for this next farming related update. Inside of the jungle, from time to time, if you know just where to look, you'll be able to locate this interesting little plant called the Cocoa Pot. If I harvest this thing, now it will drop three Cocoa Pods every single time. That's a little bit more consistent and a Java parody change. So yeah, this one, the fortune enchantment, doesn't matter at all. You harvest it with your hands, you harvest a fully grown one, so that's not gonna work, but a fully grown one with fortune enchantment, it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, you can't fortune Cocoa Pods, which seems like with fortune and how it works on a hoe now and how a hoe is for harvesting plants, you should totally be able to fortune this stuff nowadays, right? Totally. <laughs> All right, so I, when I was looking at the change log, this one cracked me up a little bit, but I, I don't get it. The trial chambers will now be placed at the same location and configuration as Java. Bruh. That was in the last preview we looked at. <laughs> All that I can think of with this one is the fact that they're still working on it. Like, it's gonna take time to get mastered and apparently time to get it to actually work correctly too. If you're Bedrock Gang only and you didn't know, uh, other outside mobs, like a Creeper, for example, should never be spawning in the trial chambers. It completely ruins the experience and it's just tragic. For our next part of the preview video today, here we are over at my beautiful kitchen for cooking up wonderful armor. We have armadillo right here. I go ahead and use the brush on this thing in survival. You can still get a little bit more scoot on Minecraft Bedrock than you can on Java. Anyways, we go ahead and continue scooting away until eventually both brushes are gone. Over in the table, the recipe is exactly the same. This change. This is a mirror from yesterday's one. Now, so far, so off, I don't know how long this has been in the preview on Bedrock, but that collar, oh, it's brand new and juicy. It looks so good. The shading is perfect, and it wraps around the dog's neck. Let's go ahead and use the dye in the water. Can we dye it like this? Oh, no flipping way. This is not fair. This is not fair. Please add this to Minecraft and Java. This is insane. How you could, like, use the cauldron to color the water and then just dye the armor like that and then put the armor on the dog. And, oh, it's stunning looking. Yeah, so dyeable wolf armor has now made it over to Minecraft and Bedrock. If we use a colored one on a cauldron, it erases the color that I created. If I wanted to do it the Java way, I can... Matter of fact, I can't. You can't even do it like that on, on here. All right. Wow, this is just, I mean, I already knew it was a thing, obviously, and I figured this is how it was going to work, but this is just so, oh, I mean, it's beautiful. It's not fair. I want it. I'm, I'm so envious of it, but anyways, the, the armor is dieable. Even more cool, I completely missed this in the snapshot video yesterday, but yeah, the collar and the armor, they're completely mutually exclusive. I don't know if that would be the word for it, but it sounds right. That means you can take the collar and dye it any color in the world that you want, and the armor is its own thing. Also, you cannot just like click on the armor and use the dye. It doesn't work like that. Instead, if you want to get the armor back, you're going to grab some shears and shear the dog and voila, the armor is yours again. No, I don't want to spend too much time in today's video, like experimenting with it. Like that was the whole point of yesterday's snapshot video. So after this, check it. I think it works basically the same. I will, however, run a couple of quick experiments. Dear dog, you will wear armor. Now dog, unfortunately, stand up and, and get on fire. Oh, okay. 
Ah, there we go. Well, look it. Instead of the dog um, running around and panicking, I mean, it burns and stuff, but the tail is good. In survival, I have a creeper. Whoa, I got a creeper. It blows up next to the dog in the arm or soaks up all of the damage. If my dream was an eternal dog with armor that lasts forever, all I need to do is walk up to it with a little bit more armadillo scoot, have the dog sit down, apparently, and then just use the scoot on the armor. You can see that the armor is repaired, and then once it's fully repaired, you can't use any more scoot. Kind of beautiful. Kind of mysterious. Introducing custom components. Custom components are a new way of connecting the configuration of blocks and items in JSON to the power of scripting. A lot of different words. So basically, we've got a brand new functionality, very technical components and things here, but it's all new to this preview. I don't think this is the exact same thing as the massive technical changes inside of a Minecraft Java snapshot yesterday, but very technical. It all gets more powerful, basically. Now, kind of intriguingly, this is a relatively small, the first preview for 1.20.80. I think next week's will be even larger, at least hopefully. Checking through the rest of this changelog, we've got a lot of different technical things. However, one big thing I wanted to spend a minute to talk about is Realms Stories. There have been so many updates to the whole Realm Story stuff. In the case you didn't know realm stories, I don't have a realm to show you. Maybe one day I will get one, but it's almost like a whole, like, anyways, it's like a whole information feed for realms. It's really cool. Dog armor being beautiful, the armadillo being finished, a bunch of technical stuff, and of course, hardcore Minecraft on Bedrock Edition. How do you think? What do you feel about all of this? And are you excited to try it out this spring? Next up, Bedrock Gang, if you didn't see the add-ons video I recently made, just check it out, then stay tuned, I got a huge thing coming this weekend. Delete the like button, subscribe, it's been me, Waddles, and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.